Hello, hello, hello. So as some of you may know, I work as a video editor at Penguin Random House. It's huge. One of the fantastic perks of my job is often free books. The company as a whole has a pulp shelf, so old proof copies or books they just need to get rid of because there's no space um, get put on that shelf and then employees are allowed to take up to two books per day home. In addition to that, I'm often given copies of books that I work on projects for. So having worked there for four months now, I've accumulated a lot of books. Too many books. I'm very grateful. I mean, it's a good thing. It means that I have a never-ending library to reach into, but at the same time, when you start building a massive library, you can be overwhelmed in what to read next. So, despite the fact I will be collecting books for the foreseeable future, um, I'm going to pin down these 10 books that I definitely want to read. These are not going to disappear into my bookcase. Uh-uh, they're gonna be red. I like that most of these books are blue. I do like a good blue book cover. I should say that some of these books are the proof covers, so they may differentiate online. Um, like this, for example, this is what the cover looks like. I should know because I edited a video on this this week. So yeah, don't judge a book by its cover. Right, where do I begin? I think I've got a bit of a mix. You might disagree. I don't like crime, horror. I'm not a fan of mysteries. I find them frustrating, often because I guess the mysteries as they unfold rather than being wowed at the end. Not because I'm clever, it's just because I'm so picky. It's like with continuity, I, I obsess too much and therefore I ruin things. The first book on my list is This Is Shakespeare by Emma Smith. So a few months ago I edited a live event that she did um, to market this book with some fairly famous actors. So yeah, of course, this is about Shakespeare, but it's a different take on Shakespeare and Shakespeare himself. When I was editing content for her for this, uh, what drew me in is the way she talks about Shakespeare from a child and an adult's perspective, how we should sort of be taught Shakespeare later in life. Um, lots of children's first introduction to Shakespeare is A Midsummer Night's Dream and it's sort of dumbed down and the sexualness is taken away. Um, and no. So far I've read about two chapters or so. It's one of those books you can read in segments. You don't have to read it from start to finish and that's great. Um, but as I read more Shakespeare, I want to continue reading this through. Um, I find it fairly fascinating. And her passion just... Also I found myself not understanding lots of the words she uses and therefore doing lots of googling and therefore expanding my vocabulary. So thank you Emma Smith. The next book, I hope I pronounce this right, is Oh My God, What a Complete Ashling. Ashling? The second book's actually over here. I picked these up on the same day and I was so happy. I've seen lots of people talk about this. It sort of seems targeted at my age group and quite a few people have found it funny. And that's not necessarily the sort of book I like, but I'm interested to try it. When I was younger, I loved Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging. Um, so if it's anything like that, I will be happy. The next book is fairly serious. It's uh, Leo Tol- I can't say his name, Tolstoy. It's just an extremely elongated essay about art, what it is, or what he believes it is, what he believes it should be. And having read a few pages of this already, I know this is going to be a slow read, also because of the vocabulary, um, but I'm intrigued. The next book, I actually worked on a project for this fairly recently, and I was, I was stunned by the content I was editing, which made me want to pick up the book. <laughs> this book is called 10 Minutes and 38 Seconds in This Strange World by Elif Shafak. Listening to the author talk about her book was just, it, it was mesmerizing, the passion she has, um, but also the reasons why she wrote this book. And for example, one of the things that struck me that inspired her was a cemetery somewhere called the Companions where people that have been exiled from their communities are buried, lots of them without headstones or they have numbers on their headstones instead. They sort of have their identities erased, essentially. So yeah, it was quite powerful listening to her uh, discuss that inspiration. So what is this book about? Come on, Rebecca. It's about a person called Tequila Leela who is brutally murdered and the story begins as she dies. 
it's the idea that the brain can function beyond the death of the body. The brain can remain working for a few minutes after death. And the book is her thoughts in those 10 minutes and 38 seconds. A concept which may have been done before, but for me it's the first time I've heard that sort of concept. And it, and it feels striking, so I wanna read it. I've read the first three pages and I'm, I'm already finding it hard. And I think that's good. I think it's good when books challenge us, whether it be the subject matter or the way in which the book's written, the vocab, I always struggle with vocab. Vocabulary. Um, but yes. The next book is The Fates and Furies. Now I actually picked this up during my breakup. Every story has two sides and every relationship has two perspectives. Not just in relationships, but one thing I have learned over the years is that anxiety, mental health can change your perspective of your own suffering in addition to the world around you. And therefore your experience of life is valid, entirely valid, but not the same as what everyone else perceives it to be. That's a fascinating topic. Um, but anyway, going back to relationships. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna summarize this because I guess lots of people have already spoken about this. It's been out for a while, but I am curious to read that. I didn't say the author. That book's by Lauren Groff. Mm. The next book is by Sue Rowe and it's called This. I'm not gonna try and pronounce it. I'm ever so sorry. I will butcher my French. As I think I mentioned earlier, I am fascinated by art and to get my hands on books like this is, is it's, it's a really big thing. <laughs> of course, there's the internet, and that's a great portal to discovering new art, older art, and educating oneself on art. But at the same time, I never really grew up with art books as such. They only ever belonged to my art teachers, and I'd borrow them at school. Um, so I'm really grateful to get my hands on something like that. Hope that makes sense. The next thing is The Bear and the Nightingale. Now, I've actually had another copy of this, which has a beautiful cover. There you go. I've had that for about two, three years now. But the reason why I want to read it now is because I've worked on some content associated with this book. It's one of the things I love about my job is the unexpected education. Um, I could talk a bit more in depth about this another time, but basically there's just some days where I go in and I find myself almost having a one-to-one -one with authors. Not literally, but you know, in front of the computer I have all the unedited footage and I love it. But also, not just authors, it's illustrators, it's documentaries, it's long form events. But yeah, when I get to sit and edit authors, it's pretty cool. And she was my first where I did that. So I feel like I should read the whole thing. Um, I'm also more intrigued by the story actually. I didn't say, um, this is by Catherine Arden. Monsters, magic, and stuff about growing up. Sounds great. The next thing is one I actually picked up yesterday and I must admit, I adore the cover. I love things like this. The intricacy, the different mediums, or the appearance of different mediums. With illustration, I find it's increasingly difficult to tell the difference between some digital work and actual traditional medium art, because it's so close. Um, especially things like pastel or watercolour. Anyway, the cover of this just in intrigued me. I think the other day someone was actually talking about this uh, at work, and it's another one of those sort of time travel stories. It's a story about somebody called Valentine, with a Y, and also his dog called Tomorrow. Yes, the dog is called Tomorrow, and uh, Valentine disappears. I'd like to think this is a story about love. From the blurb, it sounds like it could be that way. Um, so Tomorrow goes on a several century long quest to find his master Valentine, um, and I like the sound of that. If any of you have read Orlando, that's another really awesome sort of time travel story that spans centuries. That's pretty cool. The next one is another one I picked up because of the cover. So this book's called The Glass Woman by Caroline Lear, and it's a period piece. It's set in the late 1680s, not 1980s, 1680s. The tagline at the top reads, John Erickson buried one wife this year. How long before he buries a second? I should also say this is set in Iceland and that's somewhere I desperately would love to visit. 
For me, this ticks lots of boxes. Even if it's a thriller, I will be happy to try this. The very last book I have is The Confessions of Franny Langton by Sarah Sarah Collins. Again, this is tied into some of the work I have been doing. One of the big projects I worked on between April and June were some videos for a campaign to help budding young writers uh, know how to get their work published, know the process, uh, what to do, what not to do. I will link to the website wherever I can. Um, but yeah, I edited the videos for that. And one of the ladies in those videos was Sarah Collins and she was talking about her process into getting published. Um, she won a competition and she signed a contract before she'd even finished the book. To hear her talk about her process, um, but also herself, she has such a lovely voice. Um, I just found it inspiring. <laughs> also reading about this book online, the reviews, um, it's doing very well. It tackles certain subject matter, um, including murder. I know, it says murder. A maid loving her mistress. The, the subjects are endless with this. So yeah, at some point, as soon as I can, I want to read all of this. In addition to other books that will come my way. I am reading so much at the moment. I have read more books this year than I have in the last two, three years combined. Um, and I keep having to raise my reading challenge on Goodreads. I started off with 10 books, then 15, then 20. Now I'm just about to hit 25. Gotta raise it again. It's not about reading as many books as possible because you can skim read and not appreciate what you're reading. But for me, I feel great reading as much as I am. And I want to share that with you guys. Before you go, please check out the video description downstairs below. I will link to my Goodreads and my social profiles. My Goodreads is where I update my journey with books and my very passionate reviews. I'm quite harsh. Whether or not I'm able to read any more, we shall see. But if you have any other book recommendations, then please comment downstairs below. And yeah, that's it for today. Right, I will see you in the next one.